I think it's important that all British businesses consider international expansion. Why not? Um, when you look around the world, and I've been privileged to travel all over the world looking at markets, you see companies from every conceivable country. Um, they're not better than British companies. And I think sometimes uh, Britain has lost some confidence. Uh, some very good businesses here domestically in the UK uh, could do very well internationally, but don't realize that they could. So I, th I think the first thing is that, um, uh, say, why not? You know, I've got a successful business growing here in the UK. Of course I should consider international expansion. I think if you're going to take the step and expand internationally, uh, do some homework. Um, think about the markets that you're going to supply. Uh, look into those markets, see who your competitors will be. Uh, importantly, see what relationships you can build up that will help you uh, in the early stages. And uh, obviously take advice from, from the government. Um, they're very good. They've been doing it for a long time at UKTI and in the Foreign Office. Uh, and they'll be extremely helpful. They'll give you broad political advice, but very practical advice as well. And will help to set up meetings. I think uh, British businesses are well placed, actually, uh, to uh, expand internationally. Uh, it's a very broad-based economy, the UK. People talk about a lack of manufacturing and so on. But in fact, it's a very modern economy. It's based principally around services, but there is also very, very uh, high-tech uh, manufacturing right across the sector. And of course, it's increasingly difficult to disassemble manufacturing from services anyway. Things like design, logistics systems and so on are all part and parcel of modern manufacturing. We are well respected around the world. Uh, we speak English, that's the international business language. People respect our legal system. Um, many countries have got long-term links with the UK. It's interesting that at Tesco uh, all of our partners actually in Asia, uh, very important long-term business partners, they had some link with the UK. Often education, they, they, either they or their children had been educated in UK schools or universities. So they had a, a, an understanding of the UK, its culture, its legal system, and felt they could trust uh, UK companies. The UK is well respected around the world. I think that it's known for strengths in certain areas, obviously entertainment industry, uh, culture, um, certain high-tech manufacturing, uh, fashion design. Um, you know, it's, it's quite broad-based, but even if your company is not in those sectors, you can do well internationally. Um, uh, th that's the point. You know, you don't have to be pigeonholed and say, well, because I'm not in one of the world competitive UK sectors, I can never be a success. You can make your own success. Uh, the important thing is to know who is the best in the world at what you do and go and learn about them and go and see what it would take for you to improve your business in order to compete at that level. The most important learning is that you've got to give it a go. Um, you know, you're never going to develop an international business and have a success if you don't try. Uh, too easily you can say, well, it's not for me. You know, I'm a small niche player in the UK. When in fact, if you really look long and hard at the global market and at your global competitors, you may find a way of winning. And then you've got to be very determined, uh, give it time, not necessarily money, but give it time so that you can find out about markets, competitors, relationships. Uh, and then you've got to put some money in resources uh, in order to uh, build up a presence. Uh, obviously, a company like Tesco was already large and successful in the UK. It could afford to invest resources. Um, but it, it, there was a good payback within 10 years. Tesco had built a business outside of the UK as large as its UK business. It had created a whole new Tesco in just 10 short years. That would have been impossible if we hadn't gone international. But if you're a smaller business, you can do it through agencies, through relationships, through joint ventures, uh, and so on, and, and take it step by step. When you're looking uh, at which countries offer most potential, um, go with the numbers. So uh, the big populations in Asia, there are billions of people there, compared, say, with tens of millions in the former communist countries in the East. 
If you're a consumer business, you can back the fact that around the world there are billions now of people becoming consumers. And uh, you know they'll want to be consumers of your product. Uh, closer to home in the European Union, you've got uh, you know a freedom of uh, movement. It's easier in that way to begin a business. One of the um, great advantages today is the digital economy. It's much much easier for businesses to begin exporting at an earlier stage uh, of their existence because of e-commerce. Uh, they can find partners. They can find. Um, uh, customers, they can reach those customers without all of the expense involved of building physical infrastructure. Consumers overseas want to buy uh, British uh, products. Um, it's a competitive market here in the UK in lots of sectors, especially in retail. I think this is one of the world's most competitive markets because all retail brands want to be in the UK and there are plenty of them. So if you can be successful in the UK, you can certainly appeal to consumers around the world. And they look to UK trends, UK fashions, um, the, there's a link between the, the fashion and the retail industry and, and the entertainment industry. Uh, there are icons there that they become associated with. Uh, so if you can export your product, if you're a successful retailer or a consumer goods company, um, you'll, find, you'll find a market. Now is a good time for businesses to consider going international. I think the digital economy, I think the growth in e-commerce, uh, generally markets are opening up. I know it's a slow process with uh, the WTO, but there are lots of bilateral agreements. Uh, I think Britain is well respected. It's understood now that it's an open and, uh, and varied economy, uh, strong in services, strong in design, strong in entertainment, strong in retail. Uh, so you'll get a good hearing. Um, there are lots of uh, local people, local businesses who want to partner with British companies. They, they know about them, respect them, trust them. And you know, if you've been successful in the UK with your business, you can expect to be successful overseas. It's a competitive market here. Just do your homework. Make sure you know who's going to be your competitor, who's going to be your partner, which consumers you're going to, or which businesses you're going to sell to, and stick at it uh, and take it one step at a time. <laughs>